I made this middle spoon the other day and I tested it on the range recently and a lot of my shots were going to the right, right as a block. So I figured that the shaft was a little stiff or I just was awful that day, but I hit other clubs and I was hitting it straight or hooking it, but I couldn't even get this thing to hook. So it just felt like an extra stiff shaft to me. So what I've been doing is comparing it to an existing shaft and pretty much I've been happy with it overall, but uh, this one I thought I got right, but it wasn't right. So you gotta wonder what, what the club makers did in the old days. Did they do any sort of testing of the shaft except for a little waggle and having a player go test it out. That's my thought of what they did. They just made a bunch of clubs and whatever worked for that person worked. And if it didn't work, it probably would work for someone else. So that's what I've been doing. But I'm wondering if, if I could uh, try a more modern approach and I'll show you what I've been doing. So most woodworkers have a woodworking vise that is parallel to the edge of the workbench and I made a very cheap I mean the cost of a piece of paper a deflection board and they sell these for like two hundred eighty five dollars uh, I just took a like a thick piece of paper bent it over and it's all relative I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find out how much does each shaft bend so let me set it let me set up a club and I'll show you what I did this is all that I do. I take the club and I put it in the vise. And what I do is I come down to eye level and I make sure that this shaft is perfectly in line uh, with that the edge of the workbench, uh, which it is. Now, once I let go of the head, it's going to bring it down a little bit at the end. But I'm kind of supporting it a little bit. And that's how I start. And I have a five pound weight here on a fishing line with a hook or nail that I bent over because I couldn't find a hook and I put this hook right at the end of the whipping I drop it too quickly just about three quarters of an inch from the end of the tip of the shaft and as you can see this middle spoon here's the outline you can see the line here so that's the tracing of the middle spoon so let's take the weight off and from my understanding, the deflection should be less for the shorter clubs and then gradually increase. You can see the play club, uh, long spoon, short spoon, bapping spoon, middle spoon. So the middle spoon, I would think, should be down here. Long spoon should be down here, although I'm liking my long spoon. So the other factor, I don't know enough about this, but I would think the heavier the head, the less flex you'd want on the shaft. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I would think you would want less flex on the shaft, otherwise that shaft's going to torque. So if anybody knows about this stuff more than me, I'd appreciate it because this is my first go-round at it. But I do, this does confirm what I thought. This middle spoon is stiffer than my bathing spoon, so I'm going to try to take it down a little bit. And the way I'm going to do that is I'll just cut off the whipping right here, undo the whipping, and uh, take it down using my um, chair double right here that's just the scraper with a, you can see the burr on it right there take it take it down and then use some sandpaper till I get it to a better flex but this kind of I'm, I'm kind of liking this idea you got to wonder if the club makers did anything like this it's not very hard to do just have a weight a piece of paper or some kind of marking on your workbench and, and I always make sure I got the end of this at the same point. So it's all relative. It may be different with a professional deflection board, but I'm just trying to see the progression. And I think this might be helpful. So, well, my, well maybe we'll ask old Tom what he thought of it. <laughs> you serious? 